Whole Story Quest Audiobooks presents Junk DNA by Nessa Carey, narrated by Nano Nako. There's a bit of a linguistic difficulty in writing a book on junk DNA because it is a constantly shifting term. This is partly because new data change our perception all the time. Consequently, as soon as a piece of junk DNA is shown to have a function, some scientists will say, logically enough, that it's not junk. But that approach runs the risk of losing perspective on how radically our understanding of the genome has changed in recent years. Rather than spend time trying to knit a sweater with this ball of fog, I have adopted the most hardline approach. Anything that doesn't code for protein will be described as junk, as it originally was in the old days, second half of the 20th century. Purists will scream, and that's OK. Ask three different scientists what they mean by the term junk, and we would probably get four different answers. So there's merit in starting with something straightforward. I also start by using the term gene to refer to a stretch of DNA that codes for a protein. This definition will evolve through the course of the book. After my first book, The Epigenetics Revolution, was published, I realised the readership was quite binary with respect to gene names. Some people love knowing which gene is being discussed, but for other readers, it disrupts the flow horribly. So this time, I have only used specific gene names in the text where absolutely necessary. An Introduction to Genomic Dark Matter Imagine a written script for a play or film or television programme. It's perfectly possible for someone to read a script just as they would a book. But the script becomes so much more powerful when it is used to produce something. It becomes more than just a string of words on a page when it is spoken aloud, or better yet, acted. DNA is rather similar. It is the most extraordinary script. Using a tiny alphabet of just four letters... It carries the code for organisms from bacteria to elephants and from brewer's yeast to blue whales. But DNA in a test tube is pretty boring. It does nothing. DNA becomes far more exciting when a cell or an organism uses it to stage a production. The DNA is used as the code for creating proteins and these proteins are vital for breathing, feeding, getting rid of waste, reproducing and all the other activities that characterise living organisms. Proteins are so important that in the 20th century, scientists used them to define what they meant by a gene. A gene was described as a sequence of DNA that... Sample complete. Ready to continue?